Hey guys, welcome to this week's Most Craved. I'm Jenna Bush with Legion of Leia. I'm Silas Lesnick with ComingSoon.net, and we are very pleased to have with us this week uh, Ms. Lauren Chabanal from uh, Transporter Refueled. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about the film. Well, it's a reboot, as you know. Uh, it's an action film. Uh, it's uh, it's been I mean, other films before, the first one and third. So it's um, it's just a very different type of film, as it's almost a new movie. You know, so you can't really look at the other ones. It's like a new film with a new cast, uh, so um, and a great, great story. And tell You've seen the film? Yeah. Yes. Okay. But tell tell the people a little bit about your character. Oh no! Oh, she's a tough one. This one. <laughs> Uh, she's a mysterious woman, uh, very manipulative when she wants something. She knows how to use her sexuality to get what she wants. Um, and, uh, and she's very interesting because she's not really, uh, you know, like other characters. She's, gone her, she's got her own story and she's looking for something. And, uh, and she could be doing it on her own, but she needs the transporter. So she's a kind of like same type of level with him mentally. And uh, that's why I found her so interesting compared to just the girl who's being held by the guy. It's kind of like um, a challenging um, trade for her. So when she meets with him, she, she, uh, I think she gets a lot of excitement to go into that adventure, although she's scared because she's doing something that can kill her and her team. But um, I think she's uh, very fascinating. Yeah. It, it almost feels like this takes place before the other transporter films in some ways. Oh, yeah, it could. It could. The story, because of the father and, you know, because also it's a younger version. So, yeah, probably. Yeah. How That's how you felt about it. Yeah, I was just, I, I love uh, I love franchises. <laughs> I love figuring out wh what goes where. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, were you very familiar with the Transporter project? Yeah, yeah, I knew. Everybody knew about it. So, you know, we all have seen it. And it's very entertaining and fun. So when you're part of this kind of project, you're doing something you've never done before. You know, I never done an action movie before. First of all, so it was a lot of action <laughs> every day, something new. So it was great. Did they let you do stunts? Um, <clears throat> I wanted to. I wanted to, but my character doesn't do as much as the transporter, unfortunately. But I really wanted to. <laughs> I did a little bit. I had a, we had a night of shooting of stunts. I've been training at martial art before, so I always like to like fight and do all those kind of, yeah, yeah. And not just stunts, but also a lot of driving, I imagine. <laughs> For me? Maybe you don't drive as much, but you're I in drive, the cars. <laughs> I'm passing my driving lesson <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> <gasps> well, listen, it is not easy. Well, I drive, I drive in France, you know, but here, I'm, you know, I have to pass again my driving lesson if I want to stay in the U.S., so it's a whole process. You have it? Yeah, obviously you have it. Yeah. It's not easy, huh? No, no, it wasn't. And I, I got mine, uh, I had to retest when I came out to California. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, yep. everybody's scared about that test. We were talking about this today. <laughs> it's totally true. I mean, seriously, you get there and they're like, okay, so um, go behind that window and do it. And you've got 36 questions and they go so fast. And you're like, they're asking you very stupid questions. Really stupid? Yeah, like that one was like, uh, would you drop your dog in the middle of the freeways and just leave him alone and never come back? <laughs> That sounds like the, 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 um, the Blade Runner like replicant question. I know, like <laughs> and, and you know, you want to think about it, but you don't think about this. You said no. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's ridiculous. No, it's good, it's good, it's good. <laughs> You're totally going to pass. pass it. I passed it. I passed it, by the way. Two Congratulations. High five. Thanks. Very nice. <laughs> So talking about reboots in general, um, since they've been happening a lot, and I'm curious, is there one in particular that you, or a number of them that you think really worked well? In uh, different other action yeah. films? Uh, yeah, I like Spider-Man. Yeah. I thought the reboot was really good. Um, love the actors. But you know when it's a reboot, you can't think about the other ones before. I yeah. never do. Because then you can be disappointed. So you have to just like the actual character and just make sure you know, that you know, they're faithful to the characters. And then it's a new story. So then just ride. You know, it's a ride. Yeah, I was yeah, actually yeah. thinking about this today. I, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. All the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I liked yeah. it. It's so good. Yeah, it's, it's so good. good. They're going to have a new one soon, I'm sure. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's another, another one in okay. uh, 2017, yeah. War of the Planet of the Apes. Whoa. The only problem is I can never keep straight which one was which. I have to look it up. It's fine. But what? you're a big fan, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Huge. And, I mean, there's so many that were done well. Like, uh, The Thing was a remake of a much earlier 
um, much earlier version. What about you? Uh, as far as reboots go, I don't know. I, I you know, I, I like like J.J. Abrams' Star Trek simply because it mm -hmm. sort of it had its cake and ate it too. It was it was a sequel and it was a reboot. Yeah. Um, I hated the sequel. <laughs> well, it is. yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the but the first one. Yeah, the first one. Yeah. yeah um, and it, cool. it's interesting the the idea of the transporter, for instance, has mm -hmm. become so well known yeah. that like. Yeah. It the, it seems like it's the way our our sort of pop culture becomes uh, more more folklore. Uh, it's still very branded folklore, but it's it's these characters that belong to like a pop consciousness. Yeah, and then look, you're looking for it's like a TV series. You're looking for the next story, and you're following them. You're liking them. You know that's what the franchise is about. Especially yeah. in this case, where it's he gets a job, and who knows what that job will yeah, be. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, I like the idea of, of retelling stories. I mean, I know there's there's always movies that you say, oh, God, we can't touch that. We can't possibly touch that. But I thought that about Star Trek. Uh -huh. And then I thought it was great. It was so, great. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of times it I think it works really well when, say, technology wasn't up to snuff. So, like, I want to see The Last Starfighter redone. <laughs> it's so you guys love remakes. You're like on it. If they're, they're it. done, w if they're done well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, there are, there are some that I don't think work, but some of them do, and I think like um, it ha they work a lot really well with horror films a lot because mm -hmm. if the technology or the pr even the practical effects get a little better and better and better, something that was say that was a horror film say done in the '60s, you mm -hmm. redo it now. Yeah, you know. Maybe like the Lone Ranger, the reboot may not have worked, but I, like I liked Ranger, it. Actually. I yeah. didn't, but but I feel like that could be done again, and probably will be. So, and I think they also work well with TV shows. Th yeah, There's they're trying everything. Yeah. I think you know whatever you know. But I think it's really about the story, though. If the story is just really good, then you just want to watch it. Either it's a TV series, either it's a film or a franchise. It's it's about the story. It's always about the story. Yeah, yeah. So people always remember the story. And of course, the way it's made. But if it's a good story, then you're hooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. You mentioned uh, that this was your first action film. What, what kind of movies are really th y your favorite? It's really hard. Um, I love comedies. I, I did my first film was a comedy. And I, I think I'm comfortable into just not being too serious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, uh, and I did a romantic drama and an uh, action. Uh, I think any new experience is really great, uh, but um, I don't think I have a favorite because I haven't really done the same all the time. I guess certain type of actors, they're just on into a certain type of genre, and this is what they do, and I haven't been proposed the same type. It's always different. So, uh, so far I can't say I prefer, but I really like the comedy, comedy style. You know, I had the chance to work with John Turturro on my first film and Woody Allen, so. Not bad for your first <laughs> film. <laughs> yeah, I was really lucky. It was only luck. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, see, I would say that's probably more than luck if you get it to was, work with them. I was, <laughs> it was fun. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the lightness of it. And, you know, I think you, it's very hard. I think comedies are harder because you, you have to be so talented. I don't think I am that talented. I thought I was just working with really great, amazing people who just really helped me, you know. But uh, it's very fascinating when you watch, you know, people who are good at comedy doing it. It's, and it's really hard to stay, like, still. You yeah. can't. You're like, oh, my God, just say that. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, what is okay, I'm going to stay serious. Like, on, on, a, on a transporter movie, because... It, it's it's a serious movie and it's an action movie and but yet there is the. But this one is the, fun too. Yeah, so there's the sort of wink at yeah, the audience. Yeah, what I liked is that it was not that serious. So I mean, you always can bring a touch of comedy into it if the scene is about it. Did you? Is there any, any scene in the film that you liked that was making you laugh? Oh, I like the. Uh, there's a scene where he he gets out of the car and he leaves the car moving. <laughs> <laughs> and he's fighting the guys around the car just as the car goes. <laughs> Listen. Okay, can we? Yeah, we can talk about this. Uh, <laughs> It was fun because uh, when I watched it, I was laughing too so much. But you know, when we were doing it, we were so serious about this that it we were not laughing. <laughs> I mean, it was so serious because we were really into the situation. And I saw it, I was like, it is so funny. <laughs> it's so funny. I think that scene is really funny. It's probably the funniest one. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> we all liked it. So, so what's a, a dream role for you? Oh, my God. I would love to... Uh, 
work with Tim Burton. Ooh. So that would be my dream to meet with him and work with him and just, you know, have a little, even be a fly in his film, I don't care. He totally watched the show. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that will work out well. No, I, I would love, I, he's such an amazing artist and such an amazing director and I'm an artist as well, I'm a painter and uh, I've been inspired by, you know, by Tim Burton for a long time, by his drawings, by his films and I love silent films as well, oh. uh, you know, I'm such a fan. Love them. So, um, yeah, I played a silent uh, character, I played uh, Buster Keaton in a short film uh, directed by James Franco and uh, I know I was playing a guy. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, though. Yeah, uh, and I love this type of really odd characters. Not obviously, you know, I'm a girl, obviously, but uh, you know, I like to do something very different than what you see. It's very interesting for me. Tell people the name of that film so we can go find it. Which one? The short film. Oh, the short film. It's it's actually a film he did for his art show exhibition uh, called. Uh, uh, Sico Nasirema, I think that was a, an exhibition he had in London. I'm sorry, maybe the, wrong, the name is wrong. Forgive me, James. <laughs> uh, so he it was. Sh oh, okay. <laughs> 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 so uh, yeah, it was shown uh, t like a year, two years ago in London. So he has the film. You have to call him. Well, I'll totally get on that. <laughs> <laughs> just call James. I mean, dude, no you gotta put the film out. Yeah, gotta just, see it. Just do it. <laughs> it's a good film. It was a lot of fun. We, we filmed it in San Francisco. And it was remakes of a uh, uh, of a uh, short uh, cut of uh, silent films from him and the Fatty Albuquerque. Oh wow! Yeah, so it was uh, very interesting. That's it was fun. Cool. I like this type of you know type of artsy project. I'm always on for that. So do okay. something very different I've never done before. So. Well, speaking of art, tell everyone where they can see your art because I was looking on the site and it was so cool. Well, I'm doing my first solo show next month in New York City. So it'll be in a place called the Light Box, which is a giant light box studio, and I will just be exhibiting ten paintings, and I will have also a short animated film that I directed and produced myself. Fantastic! That's really cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming yeah. on the show. Uh, thank you for having me. We're about out of time, but thank you. Uh, to please follow us on uh, Twitter, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>